Hi, I'm Lynn. And I'm Leo. Welcome back to Yoga with Lynn and Leo. And welcome to our international yoga sequencing. And we're starting today with a 15 minute sequence. Yeah, so this is to celebrate International Yoga Day. Some of you will have done um, our sequence with us that we put together last year. This is a different sequence and we're doing it slightly differently in segments. So bear with us, we're going to put out um, 15 minute se sequences that you can then, we will join together for you um, to make an hour long sequence or maybe a bit longer than an hour. <laughs> depending on how long each, each sequence lasts. So um, uh, do this with us and have a look at our new videos as they come out. And if you subscribe, of course, you'll get notifications of when those new videos are coming. Yes, we normally um, put out once a week on a Saturday? Yes, it's sort of Saturday night, Sunday morning in terms of um, Greenwich Mean Time. But of course, if you live on the west coast of America, it will be, if I get this right, um, uh, no, six hours ahead. Six hours ahead. Yeah, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I worked it out anyhow. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, so I hope you're on your mat and um, we're looking forward to this sequence. In. So we hope you are too. So standing in good Tadasana. All right, now I want you to be on your mat now and observe from the base. So see that the feet are feeling the ground. This is a really important thing. So to feel the ground, you kind of have to come off the ground a little bit. You can see how Leo is starting to energize her feet a little bit. Now spread your toes so you can lift your toes and broaden them and spread them. This is one thing that is really a, a, a bonus if you can create a pliability in the feet. Now, to get that energy into the feet, we have to extend through the center of the body. So first we work with the skin fiber, pulling all the skin fiber up, the knees, the thighs, everything extending right up into the, um, into the root of the thigh. Then lift up out of your pelvis. Now, once you get this lift out of your pelvis, you've got to see that these frontal bones are lifting up so much you can then start to become more grounded in your legs. So this space will help you to initiate that downward action with the thigh bones. Now if you're, having a, if you're struggling with this, don't worry, it will come eventually. But remember in yoga it is about moving the energies in, in, in different directions to create that stability. So strong in the legs, so strong. So we're going to start our practice with some of the arm actions, starting with Uddha Hastasana. So if you have a look at Leo, she's extending her arms all the way up. Now we've given the instruction on this, but what I want to emphasize is that from the feet all the way through to the fingertips, there's an extension. And once you get that long action, then you've still got to ground down into those legs. So you create space. When you create space, everything changes. The breath changes. The breath now isn't on the surface. The breath starts to go inside on a deeper level. So be aware of your inhalation and your exhalation. Keep all of that wonderful extension and take your arms down beside you. Lift your sternum chest. And just take a few breaths. Always take a little bit of time to recover recover and establish your breath again. Just take time, feel the freedom in the body. Now taking the fingers towards one another and interlacing the fingers for Parvatasana. Extend the arms forward first. So reaching the arms forward, why do we do this instead of taking the arms straight up? Because we need to see that actually we're creating a stability in the arms. The elbows need to lock so much. Now keep grounded in the body, in the legs, keep the lift through the center of the body and nothing else moves but the hinging of the arms. Now you may find that the arms come here. If this is the case, then turn to the wall and walk the hands, work all the arms up the wall. So if this is the case, go on walking up, go on walking up. And many of those of you who've got flexibility still will benefit from this action. 
and then retaining the action, extending up, keeping the length through the body and now releasing the arms down. So if the body's stiff, and we quite often find this in the centre, it's not age related these days. No, absolutely not. We get quite a few very young students who have really tight shoulders, neck, upper back, partly I suspect because of computer work, being on your phone. <laughs> Phone body. Okay. <laughs> so now we interlock the fingers, but with the other little finger on the outside. So you have to remember which side you practiced first, and then rotate the palms so that you extend the palms forward. And again, just do your checks here. You have to see before you move that you do a few checks. This out elbow is moving in strongly. You're grounding still down with the legs, you're keeping that beautiful Tadasana action and then you take those arms up. And remember, yoga is for everybody, it's not for the agile and the more flexible bodies. It is for people to become more agile and flexible, so do join in with us if you do feel that you have stiffness in the body. This is the very thing that you need to be practicing. So go ahead, extending all the way up, all the way up, all the way up. Soft inhale, soft exhale. Okay, now taking the arms down to the side and keeping the chest lifted and just recover for a few moments. Take a couple of nice, long, deep inhalations. Just be aware of the breath and the chest cavity, broadening from the center to the outer edges. Just be in your space. Okay, so we're going to come for Prasarita Padottanasana, just the outline shape here. So take those legs wide apart, put your hands onto your hips and lift your sternum chest. So we have to see that this opening comes now. Now keep that really nice opening as you hinge halfway. So come halfway. Now we didn't mention about props actually. and. Um, Normally Leo is very quick on the props, but we didn't mention about the props, but we have got two bricks here behind us. And if that, if the case is that you are really stiff, then you can use a chair to put your hands onto, or you can put the bricks here. But maintain this opening. Now we spoke a little bit about um, the Tadasana action, so be sure that the frontal hip pelvic rims are lifting as you now take your hands down. So it's almost like pulling your t-shirt, pulling your t-shirt and the t-shirt becomes the skin and you have to see that the whole direction of the energy comes back towards the tailbone. The tailbone becomes the weight and the legs have got to lift very strongly. So be sharp in your outer foot bones and push those inner thighs to the outer thighs. Keep the breath smooth and even. Keep the arms nice and straight. Look forward, collarbones forward. Now if you can come up with your hands on your hips, keeping that energy back to the center, then come up. If you feel that you need to pivot your feet in before you come up, then pivot the legs in so that it makes it just a little bit easier for you, taking the feet towards one another and take a few moments to recover. Lift up, chest up, let the shoulders completely release, let the chest lift up. Soft inhalation, exhalation. Now take your hands towards the chest side, thumbs towards the, um, towards the top of the chest, elbows out to the side. Now we're gonna jump the legs for Trikonasana, jump. All right, good. Now keep that stance, keep that nice lift through the center of the body. Turn your left foot in, the whole of your right foot and leg out. Now see that you are getting this lift through the center of the body. So we're working so much with the legs, pulling up the soft tissue fiber to be able to ground the bony structure down. Now hinge at the hip and extend over into Trikonasana, keeping that strength and stability in the back leg extending the arm. Now what I want you all to do is to just put the hand down onto the outer hip, push back into the back foot and leg strongly and see how much length you can create through the side waist. 
everything needs to lengthen so that you can rotate a little bit more and then extend the arm up. Take a few breaths in Trikonasana, soft inhale, soft exhale. And then to come up again, we've got to stamp into this back leg strongly as you come up. Turn the feet to face forward. Keep the arms up. Turn your right foot in, the whole of your left foot and leg out. And now lift up, chest up. Lift through the center of the body. Hinge over into your Trikonasana. Remember, keeping grounded with this back leg, outer foot bone strongly down. And see that you're coming into your Trikonasana, bending that top arm. And now see how much length you can create through the center of the body. Roll your shoulders back and down. Really get that rotation on the ribs, lower ribs forward, and then extend the arm up. So go and see that you get that action of fullness in the action, fullness in the pose. Keep grounded in your back leg. Just take a few deeper, longer inhalations. And now come up out of the pose. Turning the feet to face forward and bring those legs towards one another. Jump. Standing Tadasana. So standing in Tadasana, lifting the sternum of chest and just taking a little time to recover. So this is when we digest. We take ourselves a little deeper within taking the focus within, being aware of your breath, your inhalation, your exhalation, and go back to scanning the body. Exactly how we were given those instructions in the very beginning, the Tadasana, see how much you can lift out of the pelvis, see how much you can ground down into the thighs, see how much you can broaden and open across the collarbones. Okay. So now we come for Paj Vakanasana, so we're going to take the fingers towards one another again. Soft inhalation, exhalation, jump. So jump the legs wide. Now, the width is slightly wider for Paj Vakanasana. So we need to make a square with the front leg, turn the back foot in, left foot in, right foot and leg out, and then see that you're Focus on this back leg. You've got to really move these inner thigh muscles, the skin, back towards the thigh itself. So it lifts the leg. You've got to find that lift in the inner leg. Bend your front leg. Bend your front leg. Now, be stable. Breathe. Now, reach the armpit towards your knee. Reach the armpit towards the knee. Take the hand down. Extend the top arm up and extend it over. As you extend it over, extend from the hip all the way through the center of the body. So it's not just the arm that extends, you have to find this length. And remember what we were saying in Tadasana earlier? Once you get that space, you can ground down so much into that back leg. So just be in the pose. Now, of course, if you're stiff and it's very, very challenging, then you could take one of your bricks or a chair to put the back hand onto. So be aware of that. If you're not sure of the pose, then give some good tips in the pose directory. So take a breath in and come up out of the action. Lift up, straight legs, turn in the feet, turn your right foot in, the whole of your left foot and leg out. And now, just get your stability, be aware of your stability, lift up through the center of the body, lift up through the chest, and now bend your front leg, bend your front leg. Now, the armpit extends all the way towards the knee, get that nice length through the side waist, and take your hand down. Reach the top arm up. Now, still keep that grounded action in that back leg, but lengthen through the side waist. Go and lengthen. And as you lengthen, synchronize the action of the arm. So get the whole extension through the body. And once you're in the pose, just take a few deeper, longer inhalations and exhalations. So sometimes we find when we reach the pose, we're out of it straight away. 
but be in the pose. Let it be a prescription for your body. Let it find your body. It shouldn't just fit in. You have to reach and expand and lengthen and extend. Take a breath in and come up. Turning the feet to face forward and then bring those legs together. Stand in a good Tadasana, lifting out of the pelvis. Soft inhale, soft exhale. Okay, so we're going to come for Adha Mukha Svanasana now, dog head down. So coming into this position, you can see here, Leo's just placing her hands in front of the shoulders, tucking the toes under and lifting up. Lifting up into Adha Mukha Svanasana. So this is where we have to really be stable in this area because as we've seen, probably in some pictures we know in light on yoga, um, Mr. Anger has his head right down on the floor. So to get that, it's not about just dropping in your most flexible area. And you can see, you can see Leo do this now. Yeah, you have to see that you fill out the whole of the spine by lifting the abdomen, the side waist. Exactly how he was working in your Tadasana, that length has got to come, that length has got to come so much. Now push those thighs back so much so that you feed the back of the thigh. Push those front thighs back to extend into the backs of the legs. Take a few breaths in Adha Mukha Svanasana and then slowly bending your knees and releasing back into Adha Mukha Virasana. Okay, so being Adha Mukha Virasana, I'll just come down as well now, <laughs> just so that um, we can see what Leo's doing here. Now, the big toes are together and the thighs are a little bit apart, so be sure that those buttock bones are moving to the heel side. Now, this is not, having the head down is not actually the most important thing at this moment in time. You have to see that you become very grounded. The back of the pelvis needs to move towards the back of the buttock, buttock back of the buttock towards the thighs. You've got to see that you get that action. And if it's not working, then you need to sit on, uh, have a cushion between the buttocks and the heels. And the head can be supported too. You can place the head onto a brick if you find that you're dangling around. So you can see that Leo is going to give you this demonstration here. Yeah. So now we're coming into Parshva Virasana. So we're going to show you Parshva Virasana. So Leo will move towards you firstly. So turn to the side, but still keep fairly grounded and extend. So it's Slight twisting action here. So get that turning action. Get that turning action. Lengthen the whole of the side waist. And then release in and we come to the other side now. So coming to the Parjva Virasana. Getting that action nicely. Getting that length through the whole of the side waist. Using the arm to lengthen even more. Okay, now come back to the center. And take a few breaths. So if you're continuing with the, the routine, we'll see you in a moment. Otherwise, thank you for joining us. Namaste. So standing on your mat in Tadasana, we go again. So feet together, take the weight right back into the heels, pull your kneecaps, thighs up nicely. Roll your shoulders back and down and lift the sternum chest. So those of you who have been following the routine, this sequencing, then you know that the Tadasana action is absolutely essential to feel what's going on in your body. So take the weight right back into your heels until you nearly fall over. So this is how you find that little bite in the centre, the lower abdominal area. Remember yoga is from the centre to the centre. It always generates back to the centre of direction. Push strongly down into your legs and lift up 
out of the pelvis. Nice, slow inhalation and exhalation. So we're going to come for Udva Hastasana again. So extend your arms up. Okay, now, when you're in this position, you have to see that you're grounding strongly with your legs. You're lifting up through the center of the body. You're getting this rotation towards the ears. Now, one adjustment. I want you to turn the wrist to face forward and then place the palms as if you've got a brick on your hands, as if the ceiling's falling down, you've got to push it up. So go and see the very end of the wrist needs to extend so strongly. So keep that action. Go and see, lift, lift even more. I know it's a very challenging action. The arms up, extending, pushing, 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 pushing so strongly. Breathe. Okay, now keep all that extension as you release the arms down. It's very hard. <laughs> <laughs> it is a strong action. Who would believe that just extending the arms up would be so challenging? Okay, so we're coming for palmatasana. Now this time when you bring your hands together, you're going to turn, but you take the palms to the top of the head. So extending this way. Now, reach and broaden to the inner elbows. So if you're very, very stiff in this area, just keep this action extending so strongly from the shoulder to the inner elbows. And then extend very slowly, keep the shoulders down as you reach those arms up, as you reach the arms up. Go and see that you lock your elbows, extend strongly. Keeping the Tadasana action in the legs, keeping the weight back, keeping the extension through the center of the body, keeping the lift through the arms, and now releasing the arms down. Lifting the sternum chest as you change, so don't drop to look, keep the chest open and change the palm position. So the other little fingers on the outside, back of the palms onto the head, now go and see that you reach so strongly, move the back spine in, upper back spine in, see that the abdominal area is moving deeply towards the spine, and then go on trying to extend those arms. So see if you can extend those arms nicely, reaching up. Locking your elbows, taking a few breaths, few inhalations, exhalations, soft inhale, soft exhale. Remembering your Tadasana, pushing down with the thigh bones, lifting up with the thigh, skin, flesh, extend through the center of the body. And now releasing those arms down and just recover for a moment. Take those palms to the side of the legs, the seams of the legs, and lift up. Just engage with your breath. Soft inhale, soft exhale. We're going to come for Pajottanasana now. So we're going to come into the pose where we hinge forward. We're not taking the hands into the back. So you may need a couple of bricks to take the hands to the floor. But if you can manage taking the hands to the floor and keeping the integrity in the back, then just take the hands straight down. All right, jump the legs nice and wide. Just put your hands onto your hips for a moment. Turn the back foot in. Turn the whole of the front leg of foot out. Okay, so we spoke a little bit in the lateral poses in the previous video about how to keep this leg really nice and straight. The back leg's got to be very, very strong and straight. So in Trikonasana, we spoke about the inner thighs moving to the outer thighs, but here the front thigh has got to really move to the back thigh very strongly, very strongly. And once you get that lift in the back leg, you've got to lift that frontal hip up. The frontal hip's got to extend so much, even more. Now, once you've got that length, there's a little bit of an adjustment I want you all to um, have a go at. The inner buttock skin flesh, upper back skin flesh needs to broaden to the outer edges towards the outer hips. So it's got to lengthen. But you've got to keep that action on the back leg and keep that turn. Now, roll your shoulders back and down. 
and extend forward, extend forward. Good. Keeping the back nice and strong and straight and then taking those hands down either to the floor or to your bricks. Now if you take to the floor, you've got to make sure that you keep that front leg lifted. You've got to see that you keep the front leg lifted so the pelvis becomes stable again. So this is very important. Remember what we were saying, everything comes to the center, it goes from the center, it comes back. You've got to see that you find that lower abdominal action of lifting towards the spine. Just be in the pose for a few moments, being aware of the back leg extension, the front leg lifting strongly, and that abdominal lift, very, very strong action. And then you come up out of the pose. So you can either come up like Leo's coming up here because she has good stability, or you can step your back foot to your front foot if you find stability difficult. Okay, so coming on your mat, coming for the left side, taking the fingers out, jumping the legs out. Now place your hands onto your hips, roll your shoulders back and down. Turning your right foot in the whole of your left foot and leg out. Okay, so just spend a little bit of time on this back leg action. Now you might make think that it's straight, but it's not always what you think. <laughs> Sometimes this leg can actually start to soften at the knee area and become a bent leg. So that front thigh has got to go to the back thigh so strongly. Lift the frontal pelvic rim and then see, can you get this nice broadness? Go and see that you turn from the center of the spine, center of the buttock to the outer heel. And one of this needs to be activated. And now roll your shoulders back and down before you start coming forward. Come forward, come forward, come forward, come forward. So extending forward. Once you get to the halfway stage, check that you're supporting your spine from the abdominal action of lifting. And then tick your hands down towards the floor. Good. Now keeping that stability, keeping that lift through the center of the body. See that you're also lifting this front leg, back leg is engaging, and you're continuing to get this softness in the outer back region, outer butt buttock region. So just be there for a few moments. Just become aware of all those adjustments creating space, creating length, extending through the center of the body. And now taking a breath in and coming up. Okay, now turning the feet face forward and bring those legs towards one another. Roll your shoulders back and down, lift your sternum chest up. And just recover in your Tadasana. Again, scan your body. Lift your toes, feel the life in those feet as you place them down again. Feel that action in the outer foot bones. See that you're touching the floor. So nothing can slip inside those outer foot bones. They need to be grounded absolutely strong and straight. See that you're lifting out of the pelvis. And as you do so, ground down with those legs. Soften the facial features, soften the mouth, soften the throat. And just observe that inner breath, the inner energy, the space, the depth of the breath. This is all very important when you come back to your Tadasana. Okay, so we come for Pavrita Trikonasana. So jump in those legs again now. Lifting up through the center of the body, lifting the sternum chest. And now turning the back foot in, turning the front foot and leg out. Place your hands onto your hips for a moment. Now be in this position, same thing. Back leg needs to be very strong. Now when you hinge forward for your pavrita, the chest is open, yes for sure. 
But you have to see that you continue getting that turn. You continue getting that turn. So you may need to pause. See that you check that your back is supported through the abdominal lift and then take the hand down either to the floor or to a brick. Now remember that this towel bone is weighted. You've got to see that you weight that towel bone as you start to lengthen out of your pelvis. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen and then start to get the twist. The twist cannot happen unless you get tremendous extension and then take the top arm up if you're able to. Extend up, good. Keeping that grounded action, breathe. Soft inhale, soft exhale. Now coming out of the pose, you have to arm twist the action. So turning, yeah, in. And then we come from the other side. So turning your back foot in really well. Turn the whole of the front leg and foot out. Keeping that back leg absolutely straight. So you've got to take all of your energy, your mind, your observations into this back leg. Get this softness in the outer lower back, outer buttock region, because you need to get that turn in action. Now, keep the chest nicely lifted, and as you start to turn, as you start to turn, feel the restriction. Why is it that you stop turning? That restriction comes from that length in the lower abdomen. So go and see that you lift up and turn, you lift up and turn, you lift up and turn. And go and get in that rotational action. Go and see if you can get that turn in action. Then taking the hand down to the outer side of the, the foot, outer side of the foot side. That's it. Now just be there for a moment. Now, what you want to do straight away is to lift the shoulder, but just let the shoulder become soft for a moment because it's enough work. So pull up the front thigh, pull up the back leg. Now what I want you to do is to lift your lower abdomen right up as if you're going to stand up and now lengthen all the way through towards the ribs and then start to get that rotation. Then start to get that turn in action. Yes, this is where we need to be. And then extend that top arm up. This is a very, very strong action, very powerful on the body. It transfers the energy all around the body in different ways, so twists are always very good. But twists come from tremendous stability, practice, consistency. Okay, and then slowly unfold yourself and come up, turn the feet to face forward and bring those legs together. Good. And just stand to recover. Mm, always lovely when you do some of these more demanding standing poses. When you come back to Tadasana, you can really feel that work that you've been practicing inside. So just keep your focus deeply inside on your breath as you extend up, lift up, chest up, everything working nicely. Take a few more deeper, longer inhalations. Okay, so what we're going to come to now is Adam Mukhashwanasana, but we're going to come to this from a standing position. So this is going to be a bit challenging for some of you, and particularly Leo, because I've just thrown this on her. So, <laughs> oh Leo. Okay, so when you come into this, those of you who are a little bit stiff, don't worry, you can soften the knees like an Utkatasana action. But those of you who are quite agile, then you fold into this from Uttanasana. So Leah's just going to show the Uttanasana, and then she's going to show you the Utkatasana action. So that's the folding and walking the hands. But otherwise, if you're stiff, then Leah will show you this action. Yeah, you fold, and then you start to walk and you straighten the legs. Okay, so Leah's going to go for the Uttanasana action. So just walk those legs, walk those, sorry, walk those hands, not legs. Keep those legs straight and strong. Walk those are hands forward, hands forward. Now, what's very important here is to get the stability in the back body. Remember what we were saying previously in that twisting action that you have to anchor this tailbone. This tailbone needs to anchor so strongly. So you have to lift your abdomen as if you're going to stand up in Tadasana. Exactly that. And continuing getting that action, that length. Feel the back thighs through the action of the front thighs, 
keeping everything very, very strong, limbs strong, abdomen lifting. Just take a few breaths now. Very good. Bend your knees and come into a Virasana action, um, Adamukha Virasana. Um, so you come for Adamukha Virasana. So we're just coming for a little rest. If you are following this routine all the way through, then you will come to these little rest points at Adamukha Virasana, Pajva Virasana. So Leo's just going to walk her hands around to the side now. So, so you can see the action. And get that rotation, that's it, get that turn in action. So just see that you're still grounding the tailbone down when you come into this action. Just take a few breaths. Then walk the hands round, all the way round to the other side now. Keep walking. Let those fingers do the walking, walk around. And then extend. Go and reach and extend. Good. And just keep that tailbone really grounded. Lift the abdomen. And then coming to Adamon Rivera's. Okay. So we're going to change direction again now. So those of you who are just doing this little routine, then um, this is our stopping point. But if you're continuing, then we'll see you in the next video. Namaste. Okay, so as you can see, Leo is in Adamukha Virasana. This is part three of the International Yoga Day sequencing. So if you're just joining us for today, then come into this pose, but you may already still be in this if you are coming into the full sequence. So just being in your Adamukha Virasana, taking a few breaths, getting ready for your practice. Those of you who have been joining us um, in the previous sequencing, then you know that we've been practicing on the arms to start with. So we're going back to that now. So coming up out of your Adamukha Virasana and sitting up. And then coming up, but come up slowly. Don't rush to stand up because the head's been down for a little while. So standing up when you're ready. And standing with your feet together, standing a good Tadasana. So those of you who have been practicing the Tadasana in the previous sequencing, then you'll already be scanning your body from the base all the way through to the top of the head. But those of you just starting the practice today, then take the weight right back into the heels and become aware of the distribution of your weight. This is a very key thing. So as we take those heels right back, it ignites our legs. So we need this action so that we can extend through the whole of the body. Extending out of the pelvis, lifting up, chest up, and just be in your Tadasana, taking a few breaths, ready for your practice. Soft inhalation and soft exhalation. Now we're going to come up for what about Hastasana now? So extend the arms all the way up, all the way up, extending all the way to the fingertips. Now what I want you to do is to take yourself outside of the classic action. So take those arms wider, take those arms wider, wider still. Oh, and reach, reach. So you're coming out of the classic action. Now I want you to reach so much into those fingertips. Now when you bring those arms back, you have to see you come from the outer arm. So you go slowly with resistance, bring those arms back, go and extend all the way up into your Audhva Hastasana and reach into the fingertips. So find the strength within those arms, extend it through the body. Don't forget about your Tadasana, sharp down with the thigh bones, and lift in with the soft tissue fiber. Now keep all of that lift and extension as you take your arms down beside you. So lift in the sternum chest. Soft inhale, soft exhale. 
Okay, so we're going to come for Parvatasana. So what I want you to do in Parvatasana this time is interlock your fingers so that the palms are facing you. Reach the arms out. And this is exactly how you're going to go up into the pose. It's a slightly different approach. So keep those arms really nice and straight and lift the arms up. And once you get to the top, turn the palms up towards the ceiling. Turns. That's it. Get that action. So you start off with the palms facing, you go all the way up and you keep that action and then you turn the wrists strongly. So when you turn the wrists, eventually you want to see if you can do that without bending the elbows. Okay, so we're going to have another go, extending the arms down now and interlocking the fingers so the other little fingers on the outside. Now go on, reach, 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 reach so much. Push those wrists away from you. Extend the arms above your head now. And now see, this action, the whole of the wrist needs to lengthen even more. So much so, so you're only using in these little connections at the bottom of the wrist to extend up. So it's slightly different. So you're using these hinges at the bottom of the wrist and the palm to get that rotation. Okay, so not involving so much of the action in the arm. So we have to eventually extend those arms so they become straighter. They become straighter. Okay, lifting the chest, extending down with the legs, strong action. Now releasing the arms down, stand in Tadasana. And just take a few deeper, longer inhalations. Be aware of your stance. Scan your body from the base. Extend all the way through to the center of the body and breathe. Soft inhale, soft exhale. Okay, so we're coming for Prasarita Padottanasana. So this time, we practiced it previously, but we're gonna practice it again. This time I want you to take your hands to the floor and see if you can take your head down. Now your head may need to come higher than floor level, so have either a, cup, a stack of foam pads or a yoga brick handy. So jump those legs wide. Put your hands onto your hips. Roll your shoulders back and down. And now extend forward, extend halfway only. So still the similar instruction on this pose that you've got to get the action and the paraspinal muscles to move and open. So the inner thighs move to the outer thighs. And once you're in this halfway stage you've got to quickly anchor that tailbone down but as you do so you've got to lift those legs so much such a strong action and now take the hands down to the floor so go and see that you're keeping these frontal thighs back now very strongly and then bending your elbows and seeing if you can take your head down towards the floor now if it's a bit challenging and then you place the brick underneath the forehead underneath the head itself and just release in, in that action. So if you're able to go into the full pose, take your hands between your thighs. So that's quite advanced and quite challenging. So don't worry if you need to have a brick for your head or several bricks for your head, but see that you are still maintaining this action. This action of, I know you probably can't see me now, but just listen to the instruction. The tailbone needs to be anchored towards the left side. Yes, that needs to happen. Take a few softer, longer inhalations and exhalations. And then walk the hands forward. Now, you may need to pivot your feet in because it's quite a challenge to jump the legs. But if you're able to come up, take your hands to your hips and then lift the torso, do so. And then bring the legs in. And stand in a good Tadasana, just recover for a few moments. Again, ground down into your legs, thighs, everything extending. Soft inhale, soft exhale. Okay. So the next action we're going to come for, or the next pose is Parshakanasana, but we're coming into the twisted action. So Pavarita Parshakanasana. So jump those legs nice and wide. Do you want me to do this 
facing or facing the wall? Oh yes, that would be nice. So yeah, so if you, um, so I know that Leah's got her back to you at the moment, but all will be revealed. Okay, so jump those legs nice and wide. Now we're coming into this pose from a Virabhadrasana 2 action, so turn your left foot in, the whole of your right foot and leg out. Now, come into your Virabhadrasana 2. And so you can see here, this is Virabhadrasana 2, when you make a square with that front leg and you engage, push back into your back leg. Now this back leg's very strong. Put your hands onto your hips and keep this stance. Now all that turns is the whole of the torso, the whole of the torso. Now what gets a little bit stuck is this back left side. All of this gets a little bit stuck. So you're gonna push into your back leg, lift even more on the left side leg and start to revolve, start to revolve. Now if you're able to hook your outer left arm to the outer thigh and then just be there for a few moments. Still maintaining this length through the center of the spine. Now see if you can take that left hand down to the floor. Keep maintaining this leg pushing down. You can see Leo's heels come up a little bit here. Don't worry about that. It will start to go down, but you've got to keep it anchored. Remember what I was saying about the tailbone, anchoring the tailbone so strongly. And then start to revolve, start to revolve, start to revolve. If you're able to at this stage, take the arm over the head. Go and see that you get that action. Nice extension. Good. Now just take a couple of breaths, a couple of deeper inhalations, exhalations. Remember it's not just getting to the pose, but eventually to be able to work in these poses, they have an enormous benefit to your body, making it really nice and flexible, more pliable. Now taking a breath in and coming up. So you have to unwind yourself a little bit. Okay, and coming up to turn your position to your left side, to turn your right foot well in, your left foot out. Now you're gonna come into this Vibhadrasana 2 action. So bending your front leg. Okay. Now Vibhadrasana 2 is really important because you've still got the um, awareness in this back leg and the whole of that backside waist has got to turn. Now, when you put your hands onto your hips, just be aware of all these back muscles. They need to move from the center to the outer edges. From the center to the outer edges. From the center to the outer edges. All this has got to happen. Keeping that back leg, don't drop that back leg. It's all of this lift that's got to happen and obviously the femur head's got to go in strongly. Now turn and hook your arm to the outer side of your left thigh and if you're able to take that hand down. Now of course I didn't mention but you can have a brick for your hand in this position and then roll your shoulder back and down. Soft inhalation, soft exhalation. Keep in the action in your back leg. So the back leg throws you a bit forward. You can see here with Leo, it just throws you a little bit forward. So what I'm gonna give you here is this instruction. You have to understand that there needs to be a very big grip in this outer hip area. It's gonna move in. Now if you can take your arm over the ear, take your arm over the head, go and see that you get that action. Extending, reaching. Now just take a few deeper, longer inhalations and exhalations. Okay, and then slowly coming out. Carefully, keep the abdomen to the spine, keep that nice opening, and then turn in the feet and bring the legs together. So if you found that pose really challenging, it is challenging. <laughs> You're not alone. <laughs> it is very challenging. We will go into more detail of um, Pavarita, Pajak and Asana in our post directory. Okay, so we're coming down to floor level now. You'll be very pleased to know. So, we're coming for Pervatasana. So this is quite a challenge. Now we've got two bricks here. was a quiet yay. <laughs> <laughs> so 
the understanding of your um, of the action of Dundas has got to be here enormously. It's a big action. Bring your toes towards you. Extend your heels away from you. Roll your shoulders back and down. Okay, now this is when we lift the whole of the body up. So go and see. One, two, three. See if you can lift up. A whole of the legs, the pelvis, everything lifting. You can see. Leo's got a couple of bricks here to elongate the arms a little bit more so she can get this plank position. And then really sitting down. So if you found this one difficult, it is quite difficult. <laughs> okay, do take some support if you've got it. If you to put your hands onto the bricks, it does make life a little bit easier. Mm, definitely. Okay, so now again, we're going to go again, taking your hands and take a nice breath in and extend up, extend up. Go and see, reaching up. Go and move those femur heads deeply in and lift up even more. Breathe. You can see that the feet are directed towards the floor side. Okay, and coming down. Sit in a good dandasana, extending into the heels, reaching up through the center of the body. Take a few deep and longer breaths. So this is when we just come back, settle the breath, keeping the legs strong and straight, grounding them down. Okay, so we're going to come for Adamukha Virasana now. So, moving the bricks away, coming into that kneeling position. So we started off in this position, so we're ending in this position as well. So big toes together, take the thighs a little bit apart, extend forward, extend forward, extend forward. Oh, and just rest the head down. So we're not coming into the Parshva now at this moment in time, we're just going to just see that we settle the head Anchor the tailbone, lift the abdomen, and just be aware of your inhalation and your exhalation. Okay, so this is the end of this, this section of sequencing. So if you're following through, then we'll join you in just a moment. Otherwise, namaste. You may already be in Adamukha Virasana if you've been following the different sequences. This is now sequence four. So if you're just joining us today for this practice, we're going to be concentrating more on the back bending action. So just start in Adamukha Virasana. If you're already in this pose, then be in it. Just be as observant of your breath. Be aware of the back body, the extension of the pelvis moving towards your heels. Just take a few nice, deeper, longer inhalations. So we're going to come for Dandasana now. So coming up and sitting in your Dandasana. So this is when we sit with the legs extending in front of you. So what's very important here is moving that hamstring and opening the back of the creases of the thighs. This is a very, very key action. Next is to see that you're grounding down with the legs, extending into the heels and bringing your toes towards you. Ground down with your shoulders and lift up with the sternum chest. Now, Knowing that we're going to be working and operating quite strongly in the upper back, we're coming for Purvatasana. Now, we did practice this in the previous video, but this time you can see that Leo hasn't got any bricks underneath her hands, so this is going to be a little bit challenging. So we're just coming up for the one, one extension. So those of you who do feel that you're going to need to have your bricks, then do place them. But... If you can, have a go without them, come to the classic action. Now start to move that upper spine deeply in. Go and see that you move it towards your chest so strongly. Now when you lift, you've got to lift with those hips. So take a breath in and extend those outer hips up. Extend those outer hips up. Go and keep lifting, 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 lifting. 
Okay, take a breath in and now release it. So it's a challenging action, I know, but just remember, keep practicing. It's the back of those hamstrings that stops you from lifting that pelvic area so high. So do work on your standing poses. Okay, so we're coming for Chattu Spadasana. So this is when we lie down. Now, if you find that it's very difficult, most people do, it's very difficult to hold on to these frontal shin areas, these lower shin areas, then you can place a belt around those, um, those lower legs. But otherwise, placing your hands. Now bring your thighs in towards your chest. You're going to bring the feet down to the floor, stamp into the balls of the feet, keep the heels lifted and lift the pelvis up. Now we have to see that we gradually grow in this pose, so move those arms in, move those arms in towards one another and lift the back of the pelvis even more. Lift the back of the pelvis even more. Move those arms in a little bit more. Ignite that energy in that upper back one. Move it towards the chest. Bring those arms in again. One more adjustment. One more adjustment. Now go and lift the whole of the back of the body with those femur heads in. And breathe. Soft inhalation and exhalation. Now when you come out of this, lengthen that lower back region. So you have to lengthen the pelvis. Lengthen the pelvis towards the thigh side. And just rest down for a moment. Flatten your feet and just let your back completely release to the floor. So when you release your back to the floor, you've got to drop your abdomen to your back as well so that you start to anchor down, you root down with the center of the abdominal area. Okay, so we're going to change direction now. So coming on to our front body. Okay, so we're coming for Dhanurasana. It's always very challenging, and particularly if you have a tight back. So we've got to try and find the softness in the pose, the softness in this area, this lower back region. So with effort, we have to push the skin fibers, everything towards the thigh side. So as soon as we start to move and bend our legs, we drop the tailbone back towards the waist. And this is where we have to correct it all the time. So when you practice one adjustment, you have to then correct another adjustment. All right, so lengthening, being sure that the abdomen is completely down onto the floor, frontal hips down to the floor, and bend both legs, bend both legs. Now, in an ideal world, we'd like to take the hands back evenly to reach the feet. But if you need to go one and then the other, then sometimes this is how we start, this is how we start. Now, what I want you to establish before you start lifting is the length of the tailbone, it's got to anchor you down. So much, so much anchoring, so much down, so much anchoring, so much length in the back of the pelvis, this is very key. Now lift your chest, so lifting your face so that you're looking forward, so the collarbones come off the floor. And now take a breath in and push so much into your into the feet into the hands go and see that you get that lift go and see that you lift and once you're in this position start to soften and release a little bit the buttock flesh has got to sink it's got to melt into the bone side it's got to sink down okay and now release it releasing the legs down and just folding your arms and resting your forehead onto the arms that's quite challenging Okay, so we're only, only going to practice this once, so hopefully there are a few instructions there that are going to help you. Alright, so we're going to come back to Chitu Spadasana now. So, we've already had a bit of go at this. So, if you do find it very difficult to get the lift, we're coming into um, set of Banda from this. So, it may be that you just do the first action of the Chattus Padasana and then work towards your Setabandha. Okay, so come into Chattus Padasana. 
So repeating, placing the feet down, lifting up, lifting up. So what's very key here is you have to adopt a similar way of working as you did in Dhanurasana, and that is that the buttock flesh and, and soft tissue fiber move towards the bone. So it frees this outer hip, this outer hip area. Now start to walk those arms in towards one another, walk them in, and lift up a little bit more, lift up a little bit more. Can you manage it? Go and see, move in a bit more with those arms. And lift these outer hips up, these inner heads up. Now go higher and higher and higher. Now see if you can take your hands to your back. So I'm just going to show you, you have to see that your hands are in this position so the fingers are facing one another. You can see it on the air, she's getting this action. Go and see that you get that lift so much in the outer hip region. Strong, strong, strong action. Okay, and now slowly releasing down. So you have to lift your heels to get your hands out and then release down. And just rest there for a few moments. Soft inhalation, soft exhalation. Hmm. Okay, so we're going to come for Adam Kishwanasana now. So coming into dog pose. So we're just going to iron the back out. We've practiced this on many videos, but taking those hands in front of the shoulders. Now at this stage, you've got to support your spine. So not this area. You've got to see that this lifts, this area lifts. So you've got to see that the frontal pelvic rims lift so much, so nicely. Keep the breadth and broadness, yes. And now take a breath in and extend up. Okay, so be sure that you're pushing down into your hands and you're lengthening through your upper arms, lengthen the spine, go and see that you will lift through the abdominal area. So the lower abdomen's got to support and lift that spine up so much. Now make space for the leg action, push those thighs back, push the thighs back. Go and see that you push those thighs back very strongly. And then see, can you extend the sole of the foot towards the heel side, towards the heel side? How much can you push those heels down? Okay, so be careful of this area. If it's a bit tight, you just work gradually into the action. And then bending your knees and releasing back onto your heels, releasing back onto your heels. Okay, so we come for Adha Mukha Virasana, and this time we're going to come into the twisting action. So you're going to walk towards your right side, go and walk in, go and get in that action. So it's quite a challenging action. Then lengthen the arms so that you're extending so much. So you're extending your left arm, go and see that you extend it and get that twisting action. Yeah, this is a really nice way of practicing. And then releasing, coming forward and to the other side. I'll just move these bricks out of the other way. So now extending, go and see that you get that length, get that length, get that turning action. Keep the lift in the abdomen, the weight in the tailbone so much. We have to remember all the time. And then releasing and coming back to the center and being in this position. And just take a few deeper, longer inhalations. Okay. Our next two sequences are going to be on inversions. So if you want to join us in the next video, do so. But if this is where you stop, then we look forward to seeing you very soon. Namaste. I'm Lynn. And I'm Leo. Welcome back to Yoga with Lynn and Leo. Yes, and today is session five of our International Yoga Day. And we're going to be covering Shishasana today, starting with some arm action. So hopefully you're on your mat. So this is um, a pose that you would only be doing with us if you've been practicing this in your class if you've done plenty of work on your shishasana preparation because coming into it without knowledge um, is not a good idea 
it's potentially uh, a damaging pose. So you have to, to only do this if you've already been taught how to do your head balance. Yes, so that's the warning. And if you haven't done a lot of um, inversions, then you can skip this video and go straight on to session six, where we cover the Savangasana. And again, you do need to have a little bit of experience to practice that. We have got um, a series in our playlists where you can have a look at preparation work for these inver inversions. So, uh, you know, you can go and have a look at those if if you're not at the level yet where you're doing head balance. Yeah. Okay, shall we start? We'll start. <laughs> All right, so taking your feet together, standing in a good Tadasana. So those of you who've been running with us and looking at the videos or going to classes, then you know that Tadasana is a very, very key action. This is when we scan the body from the base all the way through. And what I mean by that, it's got to take you out of any conditioned posture. So if the conditioned posture is dropping the abdomen, dropping onto the legs, we've got to see that we wipe all of that clean now and start with the feet together, spread your toes, the balls of the feet need to be really firmly planted and all four corners of the feet need to root down. And from there, take the weight right back, shift the legs right back, shift the weight into the back of the rim of the heel. And then see, from that action, it gives you a little bit of vulnerability. You might feel that there's a slight little bite in the lower abdomen. And that is your cue to go up. So everything underneath the pelvis has got to go down, everything above has got to lift up all that um, connection between that pelvis and the lower rib has all got to go up. So I hope you're standing there nice and tall, keeping the throat soft, keeping the alignment of the neck in line with the spine and reaching up towards the crown of the head. Soften the facial features. Now we're coming into Umakasana, so taking the left arm behind your back and between your shoulder blades. So this, for a lot of people, they struggle with this action. You've got to keep the breadth and broadness here. So just be there, pressing the back of the palm, reaching the top arm up. So reaching now the top arm and see if you can catch the palms. Now this isn't coming, we do a very good uh, um, instruction on this in our post directory. So holding the fingertips, being in this position and lift through the center of the chest. Now we're going to see that each elbow is reaching away so you're getting that nice length and breathe at the same time. And now releasing and coming to the other side. So this time you can take the right arm up the back. You might find one arm works a little bit better than the other. This is quite normal. And then extend in the top arm up and reach and catch. Lifting up through the center of the body again, taking the weight right back into the heels and lifting the sternum chest. Take a few breaths, being aware again of that extension and length, lengthening the elbows away. I want to see that you're lifting from the pelvis. Remember the action in your Tadasana. Come down with those thighs, those legs, and lift up through the center of the body. Get that action. And then release it. So we're coming for a pose called Prasarita Padrottanasana. So taking the legs really nice and wide. Now, be sure that your feet are facing directly forward. Outer edges of the feet line up the outer edges of the mat. Take your hands onto your hips and lift up through the center of the body and come forward with a concave spine. So as you can see here, you've got to lift up concave spine even more, even more. Look forward and then taking those hands down to the floor. So when you take your hands down to the floor, this may be a little bit too far away for you. You may find that the back is a little bit distorted by this action and therefore you would need to put your hands onto a slight height. So if that is the case, 
be sure that you have a couple of books or yoga um, foam pads or bricks. Once you're in this position, start to walk your hands back. Now, if you are able to lift the abdomen, take the head down towards the floor or to a support, then you're ready for the next stage. We're coming into Pachamana Maskarasana. So taking the hands into a prayer position. Palms together, pressing the wrists together, pressing those palms together, still being really stable with the legs and the inner thighs moving away from one another. Now, if this is a little bit too much, then you just keep your hands down onto the floor. Don't forget, if you're nearly to the floor with the head, you can always support your head to give you a little bit more support. To come out of this pose, press those palms together really strongly and then come up, lifting the chest. And then releasing the arms and jumping those legs together. Good. Okay, just stand in Tadasana for a few moments, recover, lift up through the center of the body, breathe through the nostrils, soft inhale, soft exhale. Let the facial features soften. And just come back into that inner space, being aware of your inhalation, being aware of your exhalation. So we're going to come for Adama Kachanasana, which is downward dog. So you can see here that Leo is starting from a bent leg position. Now when you're in this position, see that you're grounding down into your wrists, lifting up and lengthening the tailbone. Keep that length and then tuck your toes under and come up into your dog pose. Now be aware that you're pushing down into your wrists so much, lifting up through the centre of the body, and these thighs need to go back very strongly. This abdominal action is so key for your inversions, and we are going to be practicing Shishasana very shortly. So be sure that you're lifting up through the centre of the body and you're really getting that action. Now we're coming for Uttanasana now, so you either step or jump those feet towards your hands and be in your Uttanasana. Now, if your knees are bent at this stage, then you have to see that you put your hands either to your shins, fold your elbows, fold your arms, or put your hands onto two yoga bricks or a couple of um, foam pads, if you have them. So once you're in your Uttanasana, see that you're lifting through the legs, Thighs are going back, hamstrings are lengthening, and taking the hands back towards the feet, and then let the body release down. So you're trying to feel your back, feel the sacral area from inside. So this is a very important action to keep this broadness in your back. Okay, and then taking a breath in and slowly releasing and coming up. So if you found those poses quite challenging, then the head balance is something that you need to build to and work up to. So we're coming for Shishasana now, so Leah's got her mat here, a little bit more padding required. Now we're going to show to the wall, so some of you will be working in the centre of the room, you know that. Interlocking your fingers, there is um, a pose directory on this, so yeah, you can see here yeah, it's got that action. And then placing your head inside your palms. And then tucking yourself in, so, <laughs> so you're decent. And then tuck your toes under, and when you're ready, lift one leg and then the other. So if you're going to the wall, then this is a really good way to start your practice. If you've never done head balance before, then we would really recommend that you go to a local class. So see that you press down into your wrist and you lift up through the centre of the body. So we're not going to be here too long, but I'm just going to give you a few um, key points of this pose. 
So when you're on the wall, it's not just a resting point, it's a guiding point. Always use your prop so that it teaches you extra extension not to do the pose. You're not just taking your heels to the wall so it gives you the pose, you're taking your heels to the wall so you can work more efficiently. So go and see that you live up through the center of the heel, right up the wall even more. And then once you get that length, you can start to roll these thighs in a little bit. So the inner groins start to work and the body groins start to extend. Now, it's very important to understand that the art of the head balance, yes, of course, we have to get the base absolutely right, but this area between the pelvis and the lower ribs needs to be absolutely extended, as if you've got two imaginary legs there. So you have to lift up through the center of the body and keep that extension. The extension will give you that support and eventually build the confidence to do freestanding head balance. To come out of the action, you're going to see that you take one leg and then the other. If you're more experienced, then of course, two legs at a time if you're doing it in the center of the room. And then it's very important that when you come out of the head balance, that you just rest back in Adamukha Virasana, which is resting your heels, your buttocks to your heels rather, and just letting the head release down. Hi, I'm Lynn. And I'm Leo. Welcome back to Yoga with Lynn and Leo. And welcome to part six of our International Yoga Day. So today we're going to be covering Savangasana, shoulder balance. So in the last session we did do a Shirshasana, head balance, for those of you who were ready and prepared for that. Again, shoulder balance, if it's not something that you're practicing, um, already then it, we would advise that you are taught how to do this by a teacher or you can have a look at our um, uh, our tutorials on Savangasana and Halasana plow pose which are uh, you can find in our playlists and pose directories. Yeah so hopefully you're on your mat we're going to start in Virasana so those of you who can sit in Virasana on the floor then do so you need to have a little bit of support. Then you can see here Leo's grabbed a foam pad. She's going to place it between her feet and then be sure that she is releasing any of uh, any thickness behind the back of the knee um, to sit down. So this is quite an important action. If you do have trouble with your knees and it's difficult, then just raise the support so that you can um, you can extend up. So the pressure comes off of the knee. Okay, so Gavadasana, taking the arms in front and then taking your left arm over your right and then entwine those wrists and catch the palms. Take your palms together so that your thumbs are facing the face side, little fingers um, away from you. Now, sometimes you may find when you practice a very deep shoulder extension, you have to see that you entwine those arms and squeeze those upper arms together, but at the same time, lifting your sternum chest, keeping that action. Some of you may find that it's difficult to take these palms together like this, how Leo's practicing. Um, it may be that you need to just practice in this way or you can see Leo's got this action, this may be where you are at this moment in time. Keep consistent in your practice and keep practicing these arm exercises, they will really help with mobility. So once you have established where you are in this pose, then just breathe smooth and evenly, keeping the lift of those lower arms, keeping the lift of the chest, and then releasing out of the action. So we come to the other side now. So this time alternate, taking your right arm over your left and then see that you bring those hands together, entwine those wrists and really use this as a fulcrum to be able to create that traction in your back. 
So this is why this entwining action has got to be really deep and extended. So you really reach those upper back muscles and broaden and lengthen. And then keeping the arms up, so you're not dropping those, those elbows or those upper arms and keeping the breath smooth and even as you stay in the pose for a little bit longer. And now releasing out of the action. Okay, straightening your legs out in front of you. Sit in your dandasana, taking your hands to the sides and always remembering to keep this chest absolutely lifted. The upper chest needs to be lifted. The thighs need to ground down the extension throughout the leg into the heel and bring the toes towards you. Keep that action. Soft, smooth inhalation and exhalation. So this, this upper back region is really important when you're sitting in your dandasana, you're preparing for inversions. Now we're coming into Setubandha, starting with Chituspadasana. So if you're not sure of these names, then um, just take a quick look at the video so that you can follow with us. All right, so lying on your back. Now, if you find it very difficult to reach your, the fronts of the feet, then you will need to have a belt around the ankles here. But otherwise, bring your feet towards you and catch the ankles and then place the feet down and lift up. You can lift these heels slightly to give you a little bit more lift, but keep lifting in the lower back, in the back of the legs and reaching up. So when the going gets tough with this pose, it can get quite challenging, then bring those arms in a little bit more and lift up a little bit more. Now, if you can get to this stage, you keep on lifting, keep on lifting, keep on lifting, keep on lifting, and then see if you can take your hands into your back and lift your back up. Now the hands, you may be able to see, if you're watching the video, that the fingers are facing one another. So the fingers are facing towards the spine, not the other way. So continue to ground into your feet, go on extending up through the center of the body. Now, for some of you, you may be able to keep this action, keep the opening of the chest and straighten the legs. But um, if you're new to this, then it's really good to just get into the pose and just be there. You can see Leo straightening the legs a little bit. That's it, extending. You've got to get so much opening on that chest. As you reach into the legs, you've got to open the chest twice as much. So it's quite a, quite a challenging pose. Just take a few breaths in this action now. Soft inhalation and exhalation. Now bring the feet in, lift up the pelvis and then release the hands down. And just release the back down very slowly lengthening the tailbone, softening the abdomen, and just recover for a moment. So Setubandha can be practiced with um, lots of different ways, lots of props, but it's quite nice to practice the classic pose if you're able to. So we're going to come for Halasana, coming into Savangasana, Shura Balance. So you can see here Leo's got her platform, it's four foam pads rolled into your mat. This is a basic platform. Some people go a little bit higher than this, um, but this is a really nice way to start. And there's the launch pad. So it's always good to have the launch pad rather than sitting on the floor. I'm just gonna bring it on a little yeah. more, just in case I go into a shot. <laughs> yeah, good idea. I'll take the long out of the way. We do have quite a large studio here, um, but we actually film very close to the wall because of the camera distance. Alright, so now, taking your feet over into Halasana. Now, if you find this really difficult, this Halasana action, then take your feet to a chair. And again, we have got a video which um, gives instruction on this. And see that the arms are grounding down very strongly. And 
there is a levelness to those arms. And then catch the back of the palms and push the skin up. Now, see if you can find your lower abdomen. You've got to take the very front of the pubic plate, this lower abdominal area, into the sacral area. So that gives you a little bit of a centre of direction. And then take the legs up, one by one. Good. Extending to the heels, extending up, rolling the legs in slightly. Go on, extend it back of the pelvis towards the back of the legs. So this is a really key practice, your Savangasana. If you're practicing Shishasana, your head balance, then this is the counterbalance of the head balance. Some of you may be familiar with the Sura and the Chandra. The Sura is the, the sun and that represents the head balance and the shoulder balance is the moon and that re represents a softer action. So this is a recovery action after the head balance. But see that you're keeping that lift through the centre of the body and reaching up into the legs. So if you're practising uh, head balance for one minute, then you stay in your Savangasana for two minutes and then um, five minutes, ten minutes, whichever it may be. So we normally recommend that the head balance comes after you can establish a good timing on your shoulder balance. So this one actually is learnt first and then the head balance. When you're in this pose, see that you're grounded so strongly down into your upper arms and lifting up through the centre of the body and keep those legs absolutely straight and strong and push up with those heels even more. So you're getting a really nice action. See that you are lifting from the centre of the chest so you're not dropping the upper chest down onto the throat. Take a few deeper, longer inhalations. And if you feel that you are doing well at this and you're feeling quite comfortable with the pose, then you can stay for a little longer. Okay, so we're coming out of our Savangasana now, so taking the legs down, one by one, and then slowly <coughs> rolling down, supporting your back, and being sure you've got your launch pad so you don't thump onto the floor and then taking the feet down. Then getting your launch pad and placing it under your head. And just rest here for a while. Just let the body settle. This is the end of our session now and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Namaste. Hi, I'm Lynn. And I'm Leo. Welcome back to Yoga with Lynn and Leo. Yes, and today we've put three poses together which are really good to join to the end of any sequence. We're joining this to the end of our International Yoga Day. So we hope that you enjoy doing these poses. They're lovely um, uh, supine actions on a couple of occasions. but. Uh, you see that I've got a blanket here. Some people might not need a blanket, but and some people might need more height than that. But um, this is for the first pose, bar just a twist. Okay, so hopefully you're on your mat. Start with your legs in front of you in a dandasana action. Just bend the knees and swing the legs to your left side. And it's really key here that you take the foot, top foot, on the instep of the bottom. So the, the top foot is facing directly back. And see if you can get that little toe side pushing down to the floor. So it's quite a challenging action, this seated position. Ground down into the outer hip. And if you find that you are falling towards your right side, then place your foam pad or your blanket underneath the buttock. Now, it may be that you need a little bit more support than that, but if you're able to um, 
sit on the floor, that's also fine. So reach it up with your left arm, but at the same time grounding down with the outer hip. As you start to turn, 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 be sure that you're rotating from the far corners of the spine to the outer edges. And then release the hand down and lift up and roll that back shoulder back very strongly and be in the pose. When you're in the action, you have to see that you find that lower abdomen and sit it into the pelvis so that you keep this grounded, this out hip grounded. So the left side hip needs to ground you down as you extend up and get that rotation. So it's such a key action. Breathe and extend through the center of the body and then slowly releasing out of the pose. Extending the legs in front of you. Taking the blanket to the other side and taking the legs. And then lifting up. And again, if you need to have this support underneath the buttock, then make sure that you have enough height so you're not falling to the side. So the legs this time go to your right because you're turning to your left. Reach up now with your right arm and rotate. So you're going to rotate from the right side of the spine all the way around towards your left side. Extend up, extend up. Keeping these ribs rotating, the abdomen turning and then taking the hand down. Now lift up again, lift the sternum chest and rotate that back arm back as much as you can. Bring the front shoulder forward. So you're getting a little bit more alignment with the collarbones extending, so eventually they will line up together. So we're only coming for the first part of Bharabhajasana. And again, um, those of you who are a little bit more experienced, you will know that you catch the arm in this pose. Um, so continue to ground down with that right buttock, with that right outer hip, ground it down strongly as you move deeper into the action. And now slowly releasing, straightening your legs. Sit in Dandasana. So we're coming for a Baddha action now. So Leo will just demonstrate what Baddha is facing you because we're going to fan the feet to the wall. So the toes are going to fan to the wall as you lie back in a supine action. So find a wall space somewhere and then fan your feet to the wall. Lift your pelvis, lengthen the back of the pelvis towards the heels and then take yourself towards the floor, floor side. So this is a Supta Baddha action. Roll your shoulders back and down. So when you're in this position, the feet are supported. If you find that it is quite strenuous on the legs, then you can support the legs with a foam panel too. But otherwise, see that the inner groins are working, the abdomen is softening towards the spine side. And from that action, lift out of the pelvis. So go on lifting, and once you get that energy moving through the body, come to your chest cavity, your shoulder blades, and rotate the shoulders so that the shoulder blades move deeply towards the back waist. Soften the throat and soften the facial features. And just observe your breath for a few moments when you're in this pose. And again, if the legs are getting very heavy or uncomfortable, then be sure that you have some support underneath those thighs. And as you are settling in the action, observe your breath. Go to your ribs and observe the ribs as you breathe. So just take your focus inwardly so that as you breathe in, the whole of the rib expands. Just be watchful of that. And as you release the breath, 
the ribcage recoils itself. So soft inhalation and exhalation. And just let the whole body release, quieten, soften. And come back to your breath again. So sometimes we find that we lose our direction. It can just be for a minute second that we get distracted. So bring your attention and focus back inwardly. Take another few slightly deeper inhalations as you're in this position, as you're observing the synchronized action of the breath and the rib broadening and opening and recoiling. And now bringing those thighs together and roll to your right side. And then, when you're ready, slowly roll and come up. Okay, so we're going to now come into a Shavasana action. Now, Shavasana is a very key pose. We're going to be practicing today in a way that you're going to observe the alignment as you go into the action. So, have a blanket ready for your head if, if that is how you practice or if it feels comfortable to support your head in your Shavasana. So starting off in this position and slowly taking yourself back to the supine action. So you can see that Leo now is holding her head to lengthen the sides of the neck, lengthen the sides of the neck. Now we're going to come back to the upper body in a moment, but what I want you to do is to extend the legs until the legs are nearly straight, not quite. So there's still softness in the knee, so just a little bit more, that's it. Now pause before you straighten the legs. See that you root down into the heel bone, and as you do, lift again out of the pelvis, and you've got to reach so much out of the pelvis. And now, be sure that you're rolling your shoulders back and down with that length, and then releasing the arms and the wrists down to the floor. Now, more length is required out of the pelvis for these legs to straighten. So what you don't want to do is to push the heels away so that you are bringing the whole of the abdomen and the back of the pelvis with the leg action. The two areas divide. So you get this broadness, the legs extend, and the soft tissue fiber and the very strong abdominal ligaments extend towards the face side. And when you're in your Shavasana, finally, let the feet fall apart. So this is such an important pose to observe and scan the body. Firstly, release around your facial features let the eyes draw within. Soften the mouth, the back teeth, the jawline. Be aware of the inhalation through the nasal passage. And connect as you take the breath in, the broadness of the throat. So as you breathe in through the nostrils, then broaden the throat and be aware of the expansion again and the breadth 
of the upper chest cavity. So just whilst you're in this very quiet position, take your observations to your breath, your inhalation and your exhalation. And as you are observing your breath, still scanning for any resistance, any tension, any stress in the body. Just let the whole of the outer shoulders release. Let the upper arms completely soften so that they're grounded and rooting down towards the floor. And let the palms just coil we do so much with our hands on a daily basis, we just need to let those fingers soften and recoil towards the thumb side. Let the abdomen be soft and broad, directing the softness towards the spine side. Just let the legs be. So we're not trying to roll the legs out, just letting them find that grounded action towards the floor. Just let the feet release away from one another. And just enjoy this quiet space. So breathe in. Sensing that complete relaxation within the body. So you can stay in this position for as long as you wish to. We are coming to the end of our video now and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Namaste.